Should I promote this unit now or wait a little longer? What is a good level to promote my unit? Should I promote as soon as possible or should I max their level out first? These are some of the most common questions in the online Fire Emblem fandom and in this video I'm going to try and answer all of them. The very short answer to these questions is of course, it depends. It depends on the game, the units, the situation. So before I can give a long answer, we're going to have to take a brief look at promotion and how it works in various games. And at the end, I'll have a little cheat sheet for every Fire Emblem game on when to promote. Let's get going. At the core, promotion is Fire Emblem's version of evolution. Your unit has finished training in their unpromoted form and now they're ready to change forms and receive a massive power boost. In most Fire Emblem games, promotion works roughly like this. Once a unit reaches level 10, if they're in a class that can promote, they have the option to use a promotion item. They can do so right away, or continue leveling up in their unpromoted class until they cap out at 20. Once they promote, their level is reset to 1, and from there, they again have a level cap of 20. There are games where things work differently, but we'll get into those later. Promotion is an upgrade. Units who promote usually gain a boost to their combat stats, they get new weapons, they get some more movement, sometimes they even gain a mount, and sometimes they'll get access to new skills. It's a feel-good moment for the player. They get this shiny animation where they seem to change forms in some sort of holy light with victorious music playing. But if promotion was just a good thing, then why are people even worried about when to promote? The answer is that an early promotion has two potential drawbacks worth considering. First, a unit that promotes earlier has less potential level ups than a unit that promotes as late as possible. If you take a unit that starts at level 1, promote them at level 10, and then level them all the way to 20, they'll have a total of 29 level ups. But if you delayed their promotion until level 20 instead, they'd have 39 total level ups, so more chances to become more powerful over the course of the game. 10 less level ups sounds like a big difference. If a unit has a 40% growth in speed, they'll miss around 4 points of speed by the end of the game. That can definitely be enough to go from doubling to not doubling. Or if it's strength or magic, that's 4 points of damage they're missing out on. Fortunately, reality is often different, and the amount of stat points you miss out on is way smaller. First of all, units often don't reach their level cap by the end of the game. Again, this depends on the units, on the game, on how many characters you train, on the difficulty setting, but generally speaking in Fire Emblem, unless a unit is carrying entire maps by themselves, they are not going to reach higher than level 10 promoted. There just aren't enough chapters or enemies for all units to max out their level, unless you use a source of unlimited experience, such as the arena. If you assume that both units are only going to see around 29 level ups in the first place regardless of promotion time, then neither of them is missing out on any levels. Secondly, there are stat caps to consider. Every unit or class has limitations on how high their stats can go. If a unit has a high enough base, growth, or promotion bonus in a stat, it's pretty likely that they will max out their stat before they max out their level. For example, take Milady from the Binding Blade. Her strength is really high. She will often hit her strength cap with around 15 level ups total. Since she starts out at level 10, she has a total of 30 levels to go, meaning you could theoretically promote her at base level and still max out her strength. Stat caps diminish the benefit of level ups during the late stages of the game, since the stats most likely to go up are also the stats most likely to be capped already. Stat caps also weaken the levels a unit gets before promotion. Rutger, also from the Binding Blade, caps his skill and speed long before he hits level 20. Most level ups he gains past him capping those two stats will likely be rather bad, whereas a promotion would uncap those stats and allow him to grow again. To sum it up, an early promotion does leave a unit with less potential level ups, theoretically, but in the context of a playthrough with limited experience, those potential level ups might be small in number or not exist at all. And if they do, they might be very bad level ups due to the existence of stat caps. As you can see, I don't find this drawback alone to be a very convincing argument to hold back a promotion. But there is a second drawback that, in my opinion, ends up being overlooked. And that is slower EXP gain. Promotion resets a unit's level, but a level 1 promoted unit is not the same as a level 1 unpromoted unit. Promoted units often gain experience at a slower rate, to the point where they feel less like a level 1 unit and more like a level 21 unit. There are of course exceptions. For example, FE1 and FE3 don't have reduced experience gain at all. Same with FE4, which does not even reset a unit's level upon promotion, instead simply level capping all units at level 30. Awakening and Fates have an internal level system that makes things a bit more complicated, but at their core they do reduce your XP gain upon promoting like other games do. For most units, a promotion at level 10 is going to greatly reduce the rate at which they level up. 
If you're fighting enemies that are also around level 10, you're going to get around 10 EXP for chip damage and 30 EXP for kill. Promoting will often reduce that to single digit experience for each of these actions. You can see how that impacts a unit's leveling speed over the course of multiple combats. A promoted unit levels about 4 times as slow. So if we were to take two identical level 10 units and promoted one of them, the unpromoted one would level 4 times as quickly as the promoted one. Where an unpromoted unit gains 1 or even 2 levels over the course of a chapter, a promoted one might not see one at all. Once a unit promotes, their improvement stagnates until enemies are promoted as well, and only then do they start gaining XP at a decent rate. I think this is the biggest drawback of an early promotion, and I rarely see anyone mentioning it, whether they're advocating for an early promotion or against it. So, what to do? If you've watched my videos for a while, you know I still think early promoting can be a good idea for a lot of units. But by early promoting, I don't necessarily mean promoting every unit at level 10. Sometimes I just think you have to find a happy medium between level 10 and level 20. And predictably, that medium often ends up being around level 15. But like I said during the intro, depends on the game, the units, and the situation. So now that we've laid down the fundamentals, let's run through the series from beginning to now to see when we should promote in every game. In this game, promotion actually doesn't hinder your XP gain at all. Whether you're a Jagan about to fall off, or an Est trying to catch up, you get the same amount of experience. So there really isn't a drawback to early promoting. In addition, promotion gains are not set stat increases like in later games. Instead, a promotion checks your unit's current stats against their promoted class bases. If any of your current stats are lower than your promoted class bases, they are brought up. For example, Ogma has a 6 base strength, and the hero class he promotes into has a base strength of 8. So, whether Ogma's strength is 6, 7 or 8, he'll end up with 8 strength regardless. What this means in practice is that level ups gained before promotion will often just be deducted from your promotion gains. You're better off taking an early promotion and try to improve your strength from there. FE3 is effectively the same as FE1, including the part where XP gain is not affected by your unit level or promoted status so there is no point in deliberately delaying promotions. Promotion is a little different in Gaiden. Units promote at shrines instead of with items, promotion levels not always 10, and some classes promote multiple times. But a lot of it is similar to FE1. Your promotion brings up your stats to the class bases, so again, leveling beyond your promotion level will often just reduce your promotion gains. The biggest difference with FE1 is that, like in later games, units do gain less experience as they gain levels and promote. But given the way promotion bonuses work and the extremely low growth rates of guiding characters, there's still no good reason to delay promotions. The most important benefit to promoting early in Gaiden is for units that promote multiple times. If you promote as soon as possible, they can start working towards their next promotion sooner, and they'll be closer to reaching their next big power spikes. In FE4, promotion does not reset your level. Instead, all units can promote at level 20 and cap at level 30. There is absolutely no reason not to promote as soon as possible in this game. FE5 changes promotion mechanics to the way I've explained them previously. Units can promote at level 10, cap at level 20, and the promotion level resets their level but tanks their XP gain. So when you promote a unit, you have to accept that their promotion will likely be their last substantial improvement for a long time. Fortunately in FE5, promotion bonuses are massive, and the stat caps are 20 in every stat but HP. So for most units, you get a massive payoff the moment you promote, while there really isn't a long-term reward for delaying your promotion. Worth noting is that FE5 only has one promotion item, the Master Seal, and almost the entire cast uses it. So when trying to figure out whether to promote, the question to ask is usually not, does this unit benefit from promoting, but rather, which of my units benefits the most from promoting right now? Usually, the first best promotion in FE5 is Asbel. Safi is a good quick promotion since it makes it easier to hit A staves, which is very helpful to have by chapter 12 at the latest, but with enough staff grinding, she can hit that threshold without a promotion. Those are the main early promotions to prioritize in any playthrough, in my opinion. Promotion bonuses in this game are pretty good, though not as busted as in FE5, so an incorrect early promotion can impact a unit's long-term viability a bit. 
Because of that, the best advice I can give in this regard is as follows. If a unit you're training feels like they're not really contributing anything to the map, you'll want to either promote them or bench them. The extra movement, weapon type and stats alone usually turn them from a liability into a team player. And if they're still not one-running enemies, that's usually okay because a lot of units in FE6 have trouble doing that, especially on the hard difficulty. There are some units that you promote ASAP though. Rutger is the most famous example. He gains a 30% crit boost when he promotes, cementing his status as the best boss killer in the game through his high speed and accuracy. And as I mentioned earlier, once Rutger caps out his skill and speed as a Myrmidon, his level ups are going to be trash anyway, so might as well promote him. If you're about to fight the boss in Chapter 8 or Chapter 8x, even if he hasn't capped those stats yet, do yourself a favor and turn him into a Swordmaster. It will make the fights a lot less painful. Shanna is another unit who you should always promote around this time. As a Pegasus Knight, she can only use Lances, which are bad against the many axe-wielding enemies on the Western Isles. But if you promote her to a Falcon Knight, she gains a massive plus 6 boost to her HP, and the ability to use swords, effectively gaining 20% avoid. She becomes arguably the best unit for the next 5 maps or so. Healers like Saul are also the best to promote instantly. They cannot gain experience through combat and staves like heal and mend give them very limited XP. Promoting gives them access to 1 to range tomes, so now they can do chip damage and dissuade enemies from attacking them. The extra movement also makes it easier for them to reach allies and heal them. And most importantly, it brings up their staff rank so they can use better staffs. It's also worth noting that FE6 brings back the promotion item split from FE1, instead of the universal master seals from FE5. So armor knights and cavaliers use knight crests, bow units need a Ryan's bolt, magic units need a guiding ring, and so on. This means that similar units compete for promotions within a small pool, rather than with everyone. This fact by itself doesn't change much about the fundamental question of should I promote early or not, but it's important to realize that some promotion items are very rare. So one unit's promotion often comes at the cost of another, I spent a lot of time talking about FE6 because it lays a foundation for the other two GBA games. The biggest change here is that promotion gains in FE7 and FE8 are all around worse, while unit growths are better. Based on that alone, it's easy to conclude that delaying your promotion is perhaps a little better. But in practice, I find that on a case-by-case -case basis, early promotions are still very strong in these games. The golden rule still applies. If an unpromoted unit isn't contributing much, and as a result is probably not gaining much XP anyway, promote them or bench them. But if they're doing fine without promoting, feel free to put it off for another chapter or two. FE7 Raven is a unit who has a lot to gain from both early and late promoting. Promoting him early grants him axes, which come with one to range, a big improvement to his sword locked existence. On the other hand, if he remains unpromoted, he retains his high XP gain when he kills enemies and he is a unit that kills enemies consistently, even without the promotion. So I like to promote him as soon as I get into a chapter where I really want that one to range or once the XP gain slows down. His FE8 counterpart, Garrick, seems similar at first glance, but I think he's much better off promoting as soon as possible. His growths are a fair bit worse, and if he promotes the hero, he's usually able to one round most enemies with the hand axe, so holding it off doesn't add much. There is a small long-term benefit, but the short-term benefit wins out. FE9 adds a new mechanic to the mix that shakes it up, promotion through leveling up. In older games, once a unit hits level 20, they are capped out, they can no longer gain experience until you promote them. But in the Tellius games, a unit can level up once more, to what we'll call level 21. Once that happens, a unit will promote without the use of an item. This is the main way to promote an FE9, as there is a very small number of master seals, but an abundance of XP. Not only can you gain experience through combat, you can also use bonus experience in the base to level up a unit. I promote most of my units in FE9 using bonus experience, when they're close to getting there naturally. I reserve the master seals for units that struggle to get to level 20, but still want the benefits of promotion. Usually, that means using them on Reese or Mist, the unpromoted healers of this game, who gain pitiful EXP for healing and can have issues reaching level 10 in the first place. Technically, they miss out on level ups this way, but for staff duties, they don't really need combat stats. FE10 is very similar to FE9, with one significant change in the bonus experience mechanics. In FE9, units gain the usual completely random level ups if they level from bonus experience. But FE10 forces them to always gain exactly 3 stats, with heavy bias towards stats with higher growths. Usually, this makes bonus experience level ups a little worse than regular level ups, but that changes once a unit starts capping stats. 
We'll use Mia as an example. Normally, she has a 45% strength growth and a 40% defense growth. Her HP, skill, and speed growths are all higher, so if you level her up with bonus experience before she caps anything, she will probably level up those three stats. But after two or three level ups, Mia will probably cap her speed, eliminating that as an option for her BXP level ups. Suddenly, her most likely BXP level up is HP, skill, and one of strength and defense. And a couple levels later, she will probably cap out her skill, and now there's a high possibility of getting strength or defense, or even both. This BXP exploit is only possible while Mia has stats capped, so they incentivize you to keep units unpromoted and try to level them up in the base. It's a great way to patch up a unit's weaker stats. And often, it'll bring them so close to level 21 that early promoting isn't a great option anyway. So in FE10, it's worth checking if a unit can abuse bonus experience before early promoting them. Though oftentimes an earlier's promotion can still be nice. In FE10 in particular, units can unlock more skill capacity, a mastery skill, and of course the usual stat bonuses. When looking for bonus experience opportunities, focus on units' important stats, usually speed, defense, and strength or magic. As tempting as it is to try and cap out all of a unit's stats, it's usually not worth it from a gameplay perspective, but totally for aesthetic reasons. Generally speaking, the DS games have the same rules of thumb as FE5 and FE6. Promo bonuses are big, so if a unit can hold their own after promoting, they probably should promote. All units use Master Seals, so a lot of what is said in the FE5 section applies especially. Sometimes promoting expands a unit's options so much that it's worth doing a little early. For example, the unpromoted Myrmidon and Archer classes are very bad, but almost any unit can make a half-decent Swordmaster or Sniper due to those classes having great base stats and weapon ranks. Promoting a mill unit in class set A, such as Kane, gives them access to a Draco Knight with all the perks it has to offer. For female units, this is not as urgent because they can be Pegasus Knights before promotion, however, they can gain access to Paladin in the same way. In the DS games, it's still very much a case-by-case -case thing. If a unit is to be used for late-game combat that requires high stat benchmarks, you'll want to put their promotion off as long as you can without hurting them significantly. But if you need them to do heavy lifting early on, and you don't care as much for their late-game utility, promoting them early is the answer. And some units are so strong they can carry in all stages of the game, regardless of when they promote. In Awakening, something you'll want to pay attention to is the interactions of Second Seals and Master Seals. Generally speaking, the most EXP-friendly way to go about things is to start with Second Seals to get units to other unpromoted classes that you want to get skills from. And only once you're satisfied, then you promote them with a Master Seal. That way, you'll get the massive experience boost from going back to level 1 with the second seal, but you also reduce the amount of leveling you have to do overall. Other than that, usual rules apply. The skill system in Fates is a little different from Awakening, because in Fates, reclassing does not reset your level, but promoting does. This changes the way you gather skills. You can now get to level 10 to get the unpromoted skills from your unpromoted class, and then use a heart seal to a different class. And there, you can gather the level 1 and 10 skills from your new class by leveling further. You can also promote at any time after hitting level 10. Unlike in many older games, Fate's experience gain does take into account what level a unit was before they promoted. So a unit that promotes at level 10 gains more experience than a unit that promotes at level 20. It makes use of what we will call their internal level. However, no matter when a unit is promoted, their internal level is increased using this formula. So if you promote a unit at level 10, their internal level becomes 15. But if you promote them at level 15, their internal level becomes 17 instead, because it rounds down. This internal level mechanic is also present in Awakening, but it's less significant there due to the level reset when reclassing. So at first glance, early promotion looks like a no-brainer. You keep your internal level low, which makes your post-promotion levels faster. In addition, by promoting sooner, you will sooner hit level 5 and 15 for your promoted class skills. However, the drawback of promoting is that you will tank your short-term EXP gain due to the sudden increase of your internal level. To give you an idea, in Conquest Chapter 10, there is a house with a Master Seal. If you use that on a level 10 unit, you will gain experience at the same rate as Camilla in that chapter, which is a pitiful amount. You will not gain XP again at a significant rate until enemies start promoting. The XP gain works out in a way to where the early promoted unit will only have a small level lead over a late promote one, and actually suffer long-term stat deficits. Late game benchmarks in Fates actually tend to be rather high, since enemy stats can really ramp up in all three routes. So this is one of the few games where long-term combat units would prefer to delay their promotion to level 15, 17, or 19, using an odd number to take advantage of the rounding down I mentioned earlier. 
That's for long-term combat units. If you're only using units in the short term, or they're more of a support unit with skills like rallies, you would prefer to promote them early because their late game combat does not matter. Echo's promotion mechanics are almost identical to Gaiden, so there's nothing to add here. Promote as soon as possible because you have nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Three Houses has a very different system from most games, with certifications, tutoring, and all that. I could explain how it all works here, but fortunately in practice it doesn't change much. Plus, I'm sure most of you still watching at this point already know, so I'll cut to the chase. As soon as a unit certifies for a new class, they will promote to that class, and their promotion bonuses will be the same as in FE1, FE2, and Echoes. That means if any of their current stats are below their new class bases, they will be elevated. And that's it. I found that this usually results in small or even non-existent promotion bonuses, but just like in those older games, you might as well cash in on them ASAP. And sometimes the bonuses can be really good. Promotion in three houses is not permanent. You can freely swap between any classes that a unit has certified for. This is beneficial because there are good reasons to spend some more time in a worse class. Most importantly, mastering them. Every class has a separate XP bar that fills as a unit does combat in that class. And once it's filled all the way, a unit will learn a new skill. For example, mastering the Brigand class will give a unit Death Blow, which gives them a massive plus 6 damage per hit on player phase. Mastering classes can take a while, and I've definitely had units ready to go to the next stage before they're finished mastering the previous one, especially if they're trying to dip into multiple classes. What I usually do is use their strongest class in the main story and Paralog missions, and finish mastering the weaker classes in Auxiliary Battles. That way, you'll get the best of both worlds. You get to use your most powerful classes during the difficult chapters, but you also work towards getting the best skills. In Engage, there is no reason to delay a unit's promotion. While your displayed level resets, your internal level does not, so promoting does not affect your experience gain. On top of the usual benefits of promoting, units can also get slightly better level ups, since promoted classes have slightly better growth rates than unpromoted ones. You do cap your level sooner if you early promote, but once you do, you have the option of using a second seal to go back to level 1. This will retain their current stats, and even the skill they get at level 5. The only difficult decision in Engage when it comes to promoting is who to promote, since the game heavily limits the number of Master Seals you get for a while. But once you've decided who to give your Master Seal to, there is no reason to wait. A long time ago, I did an episode of Fire Emblem Pitfalls where I very briefly advocated for promoting earlier. Because of that, I think some people might have been under the impression that I'm always in favor of promoting as soon as possible. But I think it's more nuanced than that. There are definitely games where promoting instantly is always the right play, but that was never really in contention. My Pitfalls episode was mostly about the GBA Fire Emblems, and it was released back when a lot of people insisted on maxing out a unit's level before promoting. And I thought, well that's just shooting yourself in the foot. Nowadays, it's much more accepted that promoting a little earlier is better than waiting until level 20. But I do think there are games where you'll want to wait until around level 15, or else the reduced XP gain can really hurt a unit in the long term. As I said at the start, depends on the game, depends on the unit, and it depends on the situation. Hopefully, this video has given you a bit more insight into promotion timing. This video is brought to you by my Patreons on Patreon. They are the reason I can spend all the time necessary to produce videos like this, and to pay editors to make them look as amazing as this one. So, thank you all so much, especially my S-tier Patreons Modi, Arkholtz, Ben Dion, Beku, Blue Caterade, Boots42, Cold Cookie, D, Dustin Smith, Hayden Stefan, Ice Lake, Jagan, Carasso, Moo, Safi Senchu, Smeep, Scott Mitchell, The Vala Agenda, Thick Molar, and Vincent Cutie. You might have noticed that this video looks a lot better than most of my other videos, and that's because it was not edited by me, but by Misery, whose video editing skills far exceed mine. And I can pay them thanks to those who support me financially. That's all I got for today, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.